Well, I mean, Steve, I asked you, Steve, the, the, the link was there. If you want to come on, you're more than welcome to join me. I mean, I, I'm not gonna, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not here. Here, here's the link, Steve. Steve, I'm putting the link in the thing. There you go. And say hello. I'm waiting. I want to hear Steve Zing's favorite Sam Hain, Misfits, and Danzig songs. Yes. Yes. Steve Zing. All right, Steve, whenever you're ready, I'm going to um, wait for this thing. He's coming. He's. I just sent you the link, Steve. Steve, I'm going to, hold on. Uh, how can I send this to you, Steve? I would text it to you, but I don't, hold on. One second, Steve. It was in the comment box, but you must have missed it. Here, I'm going to uh, send this to you via Facebook Messenger. Oh, this is what a treat. What a treat. He's probably going to make fun of my singing. All right, there it is. Steve, I just sent it via Facebook Messenger. Do, 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 do. Oh, shit. Oh, there he is. What's up? Yo, hiding in the shadows. How you doing? I'm, I am I just got to Nashville this afternoon, and I'm sitting here watching Shark Tank. Ah, that, okay, okay. Yeah, man, you do a lot of flying. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, welcome to the show. Hold on, let me turn down Shark Tank. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. What are we talking about? All right. Well, We're first, favorite songs. Yeah, let's do favorite songs um, first. What are your favorite, your favorite, um, I'll, I'll let you, some of your favorite Misfits, Sam Hain, and Danzig songs. Well, Misfit songs, I mean, hold on, let me turn this damn TV off. Yeah. Um, misfit songs, anything from Static Age, you know, Static Age sessions, you know, mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, you can't go wrong with those. No, uh, definitely not. You know, come on. Uh, you got to be a little bit more specific. I we love it all. That's the you know that's the thing. I didn't when I did my I did thirteen, thirteen, thirteen. But you got to It's got to be like, it's got to be like. Uh, I'm going to limit you. I want you to pick four songs from Misfits, four songs from Sam Hain, and four songs from Danzig. Uh, some kind of love, some kind of hate. Bullet. Uh, 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 TV casualty. Um, uh, oh man, it's hard because you know, um, got before. I guess I'm trying to think what I what. I, well, there's the original Teenagers from Mars, so yeah, okay, yeah. Do you prefer that? You prefer the original Teenagers from Mars to the horror business one? I do because that's how I remember them practicing it. Oh, so you remember them practicing it really slow? Yeah, I just like it. I like it fast, and I like all the whatever. I don't know what they're doing on there. The you know, like the the weird in the background well, the screams. The, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's yeah. That, that's like it for me. Um, okay, give me uh, give me four Sam Hain songs. Uh, 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 Black Dream. Yeah. Uh, um. Uh, um, uh, um, I guess um, to walk the night. Oh, love to walk the night so much. Uh, Were you November doing coming the fire? Sorry, say that again. November coming fire and uh, all yeah. murder all got so fun. Were you um? Were you? Sing or did you were you involved with that song in any way, shape, or form before uh, you had departed the band at that time? Uh, uh, I th I think what it was the start of um, uh, not to walk the night. Um, 
I think Human Pony Girl, and I think the other one was well, Am I Demon? Uh, that one, you know, the original one. Wait, uh, what? Uh, whoa, 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 wait. You're telling me that Am I Demon was around that there's a Sam Hain Am I Demon and it was around pre November Fire. Yeah, I mean it was the start of it. You know, there were there were certain things. You know, Glenn had a lot of ideas. I mean, you know, so yeah. I just had dinner with him last Wednesday. Yeah, how's he doing? He's doing fucking great. Good. I'm glad to hear that. He's great. I'm glad to hear that. Is the the second movie is getting wrapped up, right? It's done. Yes, it's done. Yes, yeah. so. that's awesome. I'm. That is the thing I'm most excited for, and I really truly hope. That he, no matter what anybody thinks of them or whatever the case may be, I hope he always makes movies. I will always be there to see a Danzig film. This one, you know, this one's going to be really cool. It's got uh, Fred Armisen in it. And, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's cool. That's cool. It's cool. Um, wait, let me, hold on. Go, going back to a second, you're, you're kind of blowing my mind. So Am I Demon? Am, there's like a, I'm trying to ma- I'm trying to imagine the thing that we've been talking about a lot on the show, which maybe actually you're the perfect guy to, to ask about this. You know, we're tr- we're trying to like discuss the the Sam Hainness of like the Earth AD songs, like half of the Earth AD songs, and like what that might have sounded like, what they might have sounded like as original Sam Hain songs. Would they have been slower? Would they have been the same speed? Um, I th- I think they would have been a little slower. I think. Uh, you know, but but that but Sam Hain was supposed to be like that because it was dirgy, it was it, it, you know, it, it wasn't supposed to be the Misfits part two, right? You know, and 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 thank God for that. I mean, let the Misfits be the Misfits, uh, why you know, yeah, it didn't need to be a number two, and that's why there's a Danzig legacy, right? Misfits, yeah. Sam Danzig, because all three are basically all different. So, and you know, here's the other thing that I find fascinating about you guys. And like it, what, what truly blows me away about a band like Sam Hain is that it's like that this band, the way that it sounds and like what you guys were doing, like, uh, like amongst the other bands and the way that they sounded, like you guys are playing with hard, you guys aren't playing with death rock and goth bands. You guys are playing with like, Hardcore bands and yeah, just how does that work? Like it's so crazy. Uh, it, it it was it was, you know, I did at the beginning. I didn't really understand what Sam Hain was going to be about, right? But Glenn right. knew he want it. Want he want he didn't want a Misfits part two. Otherwise, we would have just went out as the Misfits, you know. Um, and I think there were a lot of people that didn't understand it at first. They eventually got it, but they didn't understand it at first. Uh, and that's okay, right? Because it's better to be the leader than the follower. And I think I I think we started some, you know, cool things in music where uh, the sound uh, of Sam Hain was very different than a lot of other bands. And I, you know, that that's cool. Why not? Again, why... You know, it's like it's, it's like even for me, like with my Black Twenty Nine, people are like that doesn't sound like Danzig. Why the fuck would I want it to sound like Danzig? Yeah, Danzig already exists. What? Why would I want it to sound like that? Come on, it's stupid. Uh, you know, everybody's what's got going that. On with that stuff. By the way, what's what's the latest? So on, uh, uh, the 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 great thing is we inked a deal with Cleopatra Records, and um, right now, um, so here's something nobody knows about. So oh, exclusive. Uh, for the uh, European release of Black 29, the label asked uh, me if I would be interested in doing a a kind of like a duet thing with uh, the singer from the 69 Eyes. Oh. Uh, Yerky. And uh, so um, it, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I can tell you there's a few people. Um, there's a... Uh, Two other members of Danzig that are playing on it. <laughs> nice. Um, oh, I wonder. Hmm, I wonder who those are. <laughs> and um, uh, I should say current members. Um, and 
so right now, um, uh, it goes, that stuff's being worked on. I got the drum tracks already, the guitar tracks Tommy's working on and, uh, vocals are done on my side. I sent them to, uh, uh, Yerky last week and he's working on his and it's going to be interesting. I'm not going to tell you the song. It's a song from the seventies, but it was like one of my all time favorite songs, like when I was a kid and it's, it's pretty cool. Is it um? Are are you faithful to the song, or is it more like uh, heavy? What you guys are doing? Uh, it made it made it heavy. You know, That's why cool. not? Why not? As a matter of fact, you know, I I there's a there's a strong contingent out there amongst amongst us, you know, uh, nerds who really love the uh, the single that you put out. This just the Steve Zing, you know. Um, uh friggin what's it called uh runaway single oh my god that you know that was not, i i recorded that in 1983 or 84 but it's super like i mean with the chimes or whatever you're doing on there it's super gothy i like try to imagine what a full i try to imagine what a like a full album of that stuff like whatever else like I try to imagine, like both whether you're doing covers or like original Steve Zing songs or whatever the hell you would be making in that vein, like that. I kind of wish we had that album, you know, uh, and we never got it. That that was that was that was a time, you know, and everything yeah. has a time and place. Yeah. But yeah. I, I I gotta tell you, I'm like I'm really happy with the new Black Twenty Nine stuff, and so the label has everything, and and actually right. now all I need is artwork, and uh, so I I gotta get some some cool people out there to submit some art cleopatra so. kind of knows where it's at and if you're looking listen if you're looking for people um i if you want to if you want me to i will rec make a recommendation for two really cool people and if you like what they have and i'll tell you what to, why don't you me. call me tomorrow okay i will okay. absolutely do that because i think i if you really are looking for art i know people that are really fucking some really cool people that would freaking cool yeah job. call me tomorrow i will but I yeah so um so now let's see um what so what other did, songs are we what other songs are we talking about i want to hear four four dancing songs now all right um i would have to say godless yes um soul on fire okay um uh, it's hard because they're, they're you know there's a lot of cool songs uh, uh pain is like an animal okay okay wow that's one that that's something i haven't heard in a long time uh and um um uh, uh oh god man there's so many there really are a lot of songs Mm. brand new god okay what is what's the funnest for you to play play on it's like what is one and i guess there's two quite there's two that that splits into two roads because it's like there might be a song that might be more complicated and you got to think about it but you like the way it sounds or, and then there's the song that might be more fun because you you don't have to think about as much like because it's an easier song to play what 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 are some songs like that well, Godless is fun to play, and and uh, uh, you know, am I demon? And I don't know. There, you know, each one takes on form. It, it, it's kind of weird to be to be playing those songs, right? Um, and and being on stage with Tommy and Johnny and Glenn, mm -hmm. and, and I think the camaraderie of, f with us works really well. And there, you know, you talk about you know. I, I heard you talking about the, the live stuff before. Um, yeah, you know, look, they, they had a, they had an incredible lineup back then. Uh, it it um, I, if it wasn't for John, it wouldn't have held together. You know, John was a John's a great guitar player. Um, oh, John Christ, yeah, dude. Yeah. You know, and, but and and then people try to compare Tommy, but Tommy Tommy's not John, and I don't think Tommy tries to be like john that's that that would tommy's got his own sound he's got his own thing you know and you I you you can't really compare agree. but when, when it comes down to it you know we're all we're all friends so i think it works 
um, it's much easier. There was a lot of riff, riffs in the band back then, and that doesn't make for good storytelling, for sure. So, right. Um, uh, but, yeah, I mean, look, the, I, I, I could think of all the different lineups and, and stuff, and, and there, everybody's got good there's there's good songs on it on on all those albums you know how can there not be i mean even even danzig five you know that's a that's an interesting you know i've several times i've really tried to sit with danzig five and i just i mean i like that what's the first one is seventh house i think the yeah seventh house, the first one well i'm getting a question from alberto who was on on uh, he wants to know Ask Steve, will will we get an Elvis track at Psychofest 2021 and surprises? That's what Alberto asks. Right Alberto, now. I hope we get to I hope we get to Psycho Fest. <laughs> you know. I hope for you guys too. Uh, well, I, I, I look not for just us, but for the but for entertainment in general in the world, you know. Um I'm uh, Man, you know, it's, I was flying today, you know, and all the, I was talking to a flight attendant and, and she came up to me. I had gotten bumped up to, to first class. And so she, she actually, she stopped and she said, you're a musician. I'm like, yeah. So we were just chatting and she's like, well, it, it, I know things, you know, we're American and things are going to come back and, you know, we're blah, blah, blah. And then she looks at me and and it was really weird. She goes, it is going to come back, right? Because, like, people are scared. I mean, people don't know what to think anymore because we've become so politicized that you don't know what the truth is and what isn't the truth. And whether and whether you're left or you're right, it doesn't matter, right? Because there are agendas on both sides, but the, but the, but to take out the, the part of us being, um, the Americans or, or or people of the world, they forgot about us, all right? They, they forgot about the people, and it's all about the agenda. And the agenda does not include me, you, or anybody else. It's all personal and, and corporate agendas. And again, is there a virus? Yeah. As to what extent, I don't know. I, yes, I know a lot of people that have gotten it. My own doctor died from it. So yeah, there's a virus. But I, again, at this point, you don't know what to believe and who to believe. And it's it's a shit show for sure. You know, what's interesting. I was talking with um, I was talking about this with Loki. We have I have another podcast, which, by the way, you should come on that podcast it's called Pizza Punk. I just had Andy Chernoff from The Dictators. That was a friggin awesome conversation. We were talking Loki and I were talking about the future of live music and how that's what that's going to look like and how that works. And like, how can a band, I mean, obviously not a band like Danzig, like a band, like at a much, much, much lower level that, you know, maybe is doing like super, like going the super indie route. Like, is there a way for, for, for that kind of band to tour? And you you know, like? again, you know, everybody's is waiting for this magic um, um, potion that they're going to come out with this vaccine you know, maybe that'll work. I don't know. I would never take it because I don't even take the regular flu shot because I don't believe in that shit as far as putting stuff in your body. You don't even know what the hell's going in you, you know, so I'm very leery of that stuff. And especially a vaccine that they're going to make in a matter of months. Um, I'm not sure that's the solution, to be honest with you. Well, it, but, you know, is the solution masks? I don't know. I mean, you you, you can't function with a mask on it doesn't work you know um are people going to get sick yeah but at some point you got to have herd immunity i mean the spanish flu disappeared within 12 months people had herd immunity it went away so so you have to think now you know is this something more because they keep referring to it like the spanish flu is it something more that we don't know about that they're not telling us who knows? I don't know. I don't. Nobody knows. And if they do know, they're not telling us. So, um, but well, the thing that's interesting about live live venues in particular, the thing that I'm wondering is like, 
what kind of liability is there liability? What kind of liability liabilities does a live venue or the band itself, the band have liability? Like how, like where, like there's so much red tape. Like, well, of like just, just, just in general, when we go on tour, right? Yeah. We have to have insurance as a band per right. show, right? right? Somebody right. gets hurt. It has nothing to do with the band. Who do they right. sue? They start, right. they sue the venue, they sue the band. Um, so there's all kinds of crap that goes. People think you just go on tour and they you book a show and that's it. There's a lot more to it than that. And that's why ticket prices are the way they are because the expense of touring is 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 astronomical. You know, you yeah. got things like tour buses. And so you go, you get a tour bus. Well, a tour bus is $800 to $1,000 a day. Then you have fuel. Then you have the driver, right? The fuel is insane. Well, the fuel that and and there's insane. you know there's tolls, there's taxes, and yeah. there's the driver, and the driver makes a good amount of money as he should because he's driving the band, it's keeping right? everybody safe. Right, right, exactly. So there's there's a lot of different things involved that a lot of people don't understand, and there's a lot of hands in the pot, right? Right. So I'm um, oh, you got management business managers, um, uh, uh, legal. So there's all kinds of people that get the money before you do. And, but that's just part of the business. That doesn't matter with, with this whole thing. I don't know. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And I'm hoping that after the election, um, that it starts going away or becoming, you know, it's going to be a shit show for a while. That's for sure. But um, whoever the well, time will tell, that's for certain. I mean, we are literally on the cusp. I I told you privately my thoughts about civil war and whatnot. I well, think like I don't we're know we're there. Going to happen? Yeah, we're there. <laughs> <is> scary. Um, <laughs> and but there's too many outside influences outside this country, and that's the problem. You know, that's the problem. And I don't know. Look. Sometimes you just have to put your head down and 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 go forward and and not try to think too much because you got to understand something, Jeff. This shit has been going on forever, right? It's just really to the forefront now because the guy in charge tells a really good story right now. He's really good at it, and I don't care. I I have no. I don't care if you're left or right. It doesn't bother me. It it is what it is. It's politics, and and politics are are dirty. You know, it's no different than the mafia, all right? So, uh, but it doesn't well, matter. I'll tell you two things, two things. Thing number one, I will say this. The thing that the biggest notion that I have taken away from this particular election, as opposed to previous elections, is the one thing that does give me fatigue is like that both the, the two party system is a status quo where like all the problems that, you know, some of the problems that are blamed on the current current administration have existed before the current administration and will probably exist after the current administration. And it's partially because of the system. That's These are number one. the problems that have always been here and will always be here. And it doesn't matter who's in charge, because, again, there it, it's not it doesn't have to do with me or you. It has to do with agendas. And agendas are are it's, it are financial. They're they're all financial agendas. They're not. It has nothing to do with anything but financial agendas. And if we can all stop saying the left is right and the and the right is wrong and, and, and vice versa, and we can figure out that hey, they failed every single person in this country. All right. Now, look at it like this. Say you're an average person, right, with an average moderate income of, let's call it fifty or $60,000, and you are you come out of college, right, with student debt, and maybe you're living in an apartment by yourself or with a roommate, and you have uh, rent, you have cell phone, you have um, your your student loans, and maybe a car payment, and now you lost your job. All right. And if they're private loans, you still owe money. They don't care. They're not. That's not being furloughed, those payments. So now 
you get your $1,200 from the government. And after you spend your $1,200 on a said rent or car payment and or, you know, uh, student loans and maybe food or maybe utilities, uh, then what? Okay, so you're getting unemployment. But then when that extra ran out, there was no rush and there's still no rush to get anybody else anything different. So what is that saying? You You know, people talk about they don't want socialism. Well, what is socialism? It's exactly what we're in right now. Police are socialism. Schools are socialism. Relying on the government for help <laughs> is socialism. So tell me, <laughs> tell me we're not a socialist country, right? Tell me. I, I mean, uh, I, suddenly I, there's a socialist boogeyman out there out, out of nowhere. Like all of a sudden it's just like, ooh, the socialism is going to get. It's like all this shit is socialist. Well, of course it is. And it's all smoke and mirrors. And again, I'm not I'm not a political person. I don't really care. What I care about is is trying to is trying to find out somewhat of the truth of what the hell is going on and what is real and what isn't. And I don't I don't really know if we'll, we'll really find out uh, anytime soon. But I'm hoping that, um, you know, I, in the, this flight attendant today where I said, well, it's kind of reminiscent of 9-11. It's like, no, this is worse. She's like, this is definitely worse. Um, she, all her friends, the co-workers, you know, that were there 20 years, 25 years, they were all just let go. And, you know. A lot so, of people losing their jobs. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. So, you know, there's, it's, uh, it's a rough one. But again, what don't we know if, if they, if they, say this is kind of like the Spanish flu. Well, the Spanish flu in 12 months was done and over with. If, if you read up on it. Well, what's going on here? What, what, what is it that we don't know about this? I don't know, but, but we have, we still, it still hasn't been a year yet, at least a year on the official calendar. So we'll come. Well, back. what are we, eight months? We're eight now? months. We'll see. Nine months. Ten months. Well, Ten you months. Know, I just hope that this election thing is gets over fast, and whoever's going to be the in charge is in charge, and we move on. And, and without know. going down that rabbit hole, I that's what I'm most afraid of because well, I don't think that's going to be the case. Well, no, without going not, down that rabbit hole, of course not. Of course not. I, I get um, it. But but to, my other point was I hope, and we haven't seen it yet, but I hope that there's a revolution of punk rock in the sense of like people picking well, up instruments I, and I, I i gotta tell you something um you know i'm I, I co-produced this new uh chromags album and we, you know we mazel tov by the way i've been seeing those progresses uh, updates and stuff how how's that been what's that been like well it's been amazing and wait till you hear this and yeah. i i don't want to release information yet but it's pretty cool and it's um what he wrote and stuff is is so spot on for what's going on uh but it and there's just by coincidence you, you'll see i can't i don't want to release it no, no, i understand i respect but that but it's tell uh me, tell me this tell me this as uh because you're you're a co-producer so like what is that like how, how does that all work you come they you have a new you have a studio trick-or-treat studios right that's yes. what it's called so you have a studio they come in and, and you uh you're engineering the session but you're also like what do you like help with like say like trying to find like the right kind of sound or like what what's well, the what sound it's 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 kind of guiding him like vocally and and things and and um just you know trying to figure out heads and heads or tails on what's going on and between myself and this other guy arthur rizik uh who uh produced power trip and bands like that um we've both been working on it and uh it's uh it's really good it's it's been a blast you know, Harley's a great friend and uh, it's it's really I'm really uh, honored to be part of what he's coming out with. That's so. really cool. And you get to, and it's like and it's like you get to also I mean, and, and the other thing that's interesting, too, is that there's like so many places to go. Like I saw you you had a video one day you were talking about like all the different you have all these crazy plugins that you can do like you have all these like little like like amp emulators that like, I'm, like, I'm i'm heavily invested in in studio gear and and 
it's my uh, it's my passion. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's I, since I was a little kid, but uh, it's been uh, you know it, it's been quite an investment. And moving to this new house has been great. You know, uh, building out my control room and stuff, and so. Yeah, it's, you and you bought a you. I saw you bought a giant. You bought the giant home improvement uh, skeleton. Home Depot. Well, they <laughs> sold. They're sold out around the country. So I convinced the store manager to sell me the yeah. floor model at forty percent off. So nice. <laughs> Never. Nice. I I won't say what. That's so cool though. And it's just like it's like a giant skeleton. It's, it's like all you. You need the pumpkins. You just need the pumpkins from the <laughs> stage on, on yeah. either side of the, of the skeleton. Just call Glenn. Be like, Glenn, let me get those pumpkins. <laughs> like my yeah. pumpkins. But um, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to keep it up all year round. Although Lana you should Lana thinks otherwise, but I'm going to put a Santa hat on it for Christmas. And yes, I think uh, it's well, a pain in the ass to take down anyway. Right. Yeah. It's you need ladders and stuff. Yeah, huh? screw that. Ladders. Just leave it up. Lana yeah. doesn't mind. What's that? Lana's no, cool with no, it. She's like, oh, we got. We'll put it in the backyard. I'm like, I'm not moving this damn thing. A, it's heavy, and it and it took three people to put together. Did Otis? Does Otis like bark at it? <laughs> Otis, <laughs> my boy. Um, but yeah, otherwise you got to come by the house. I want it. Yeah, man, I want to see it. Um, video. One, last, one last question. Um. You, you were mentioning your, your love for studio gear started when you were little. Did that come from George Germain? Did he no, like... actually, it, it, it's, it started actually before George. Although George really, um, he would teach me about things music-wise, studio. Yeah. Um, you know, George was an old beatnik guy that just knew a little bit about everything, you know? So... Um, you know, he was good at, he was good at certain things. I learned a lot. Like, you know, you we were talking about that runaway thing. So that yeah. runaway song, you know what that was? That was, um, I was going to go to recording school and I was really? telling the engineer, Bob Aleka, who owned the real platinum studios in Lodi, where we recorded right. morning noise. And, and of course, uh, Sam Hain and undead chick. Um, I was telling him, and he's like, I'll tell you what. He's like, the best way to learn recording is to actually do it hands-on. He goes, in those schools, you get some hands-on, but you're with so many people. He's like, I'll tell you what. I'll sell you studio time at a reduced discount, and you come in, and you do something, and you will be hands-on from soup to nuts. And that's wow. why I did Runaway. It was to really learn how to record. And that, so that's where you got... So that's how you learned how to like record. Well, I like hands on on the board and EQ right. and and walk me through things. That's yeah. why that song was done. And wow. I never, I had never sang before, so I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I loved that song as a kid. I'm like, all right, let's try that, and that's why we did that song. It's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and I know. Listen, I know. Uh, you know, you say, oh, you've never sung before, but you actually have a. You have a pretty good voice, and you know it kills me that you never. You should have been. I'm just saying you should utilize it. You should have utilized it more in the past. Let's put it that way. Uh, that's what I'm going to say about that. Wait till you hear the new Black Twenty Nine album. Okay, I'm excited. I'm. I'm. Very I, I, I. You know what? I am too. Not because it's my stuff, um, but I'm. I'm. You know, I actually like it. You know, when I can listen over to it over and over, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. You know. You and Dano make a great little team of like, you know, just like the way that you guys, you guys are multi-instrumentalists. You guys know what you're doing. You got the engineering stuff. It's like, it, it makes so much sense. Well, yeah. it, it, it works because I come from a simplistic background of, you know, verse, chorus, verse, bridge, mm -hmm. chorus, get the fuck out. And mm -hmm. he comes from a very um, prog type background. Gotcha. And, you know, so he takes my simplistic ideas and puts a different spin on them and it works because we're not we're not there recording um you know a lot of times in the past you have different members and they're all listening for their parts but they're not listening for the song right in this mm -hmm. in this case 
both him and I are listening for what's best for the song and not what's best for my vocals, drums, his guitar, his bass, but what's best for the song. So when you only have two hands in the pot, or I should say four hands in the pot, rather than eight or 10, it's, it's very different. You get to compliment you and you complement each other with each you you with your song structure and him with like the prog stuff. You guys I, can compliment each other. I think way. so. And it's nowhere near prog, but I'm saying, you know what I mean? His, yeah, his influence of that, the way he comes up with guitar parts to my ideas, you know, right. I know what, you know, he'll all often say like, he goes, you know, you know what it sounds like in your head before it's even recorded. And I do. Cause I kind of, you know, when I'm thinking about it, I, I know what it is, but, and, but he helps, you know, he helps me get there and without him, I would, I'd be lost to be honest with you. So. One, one last question. One last question. Um, the, we were talking about this the other day. I had, I did not know this. This blew my mind. The Sam Haim, uh, Nishim cover. Mm -hmm. it, that's real horse blood. Yeah. Okay. What the, like, what the fuck? How does that, how does that go down? What you're in Glenn's basement. Glenn goes, guys, we're going to put up, we're going to cover ourselves in horse blood. This is pre the blood shows, right? You haven't done the blood shows yet. Right. So, so what? It was a very messy day. I could tell you that. <laughs> but like, what does he just, does he, he took the photo himself, right? So uh, he set the, he set the, the camera up and my friend, Joe Olivetti, um, who uh, actually roadied for Sam Hain and, and drove for us around the country um, and sold merchandise and basically did everything. Uh, actually, was one of the singers of Morning Noise, too. Um, he, uh, he snapped the photo after Glenn set the shot up. But, uh, yeah, so. Wow. Yeah. And, Good but, times. But you're just like, but, but I don't understand. Glenn comes up to me, he's like, He's like Steve, Erie, put put this horse blood on you, and you're just like, all right, let's do it. It was <laughs> uh, like I said, it was a very messy day. It was, you know, there was uh, newspaper all over Glenn's house leading right. up to the shower, which we all had to take right after because it was all right. over the place. And then his wow. father made his pasta, so it was good. That's the best ending to that situation I've ever heard. So the greatest album cover ever like it's just such a great album cover it's just like you guys are just like standing I, there i very the rarely think about it to be honest with you it's, it's kind of one of those things that i guess i take for granted in my mind i mean it's i remember it like it was yesterday taking the photo um how many did you take I, it was like three or four yeah yeah there was three mm -hmm. or four good shots i think maybe we took a half a dozen maybe they, some were blurry or whatever but um yeah, yeah where, did, where did Glenn get the horse blood from? <laughs> uh, you go up to a slaughterhouse in New York State, right? Okay, <laughs> that's yeah. so much less exciting than what I thought in my mind, but that makes sense. Yeah, you just go to a slaughterhouse. Well, hey, Glenn, you, you, you do know Glenn loves animals and would never hurt an animal. Of course, no, of course, not, I do know that. That it's not his thing. Yeah, I he likes animals more than he likes people. That's for sure. Right. So, right. Um, so that answers. But, that um, yeah. So. That's that. Yeah. So I hope I answered Alber Alberto, was it? Yes, you did. I, you answered one of his, I don't know. There was a, a whole slew of questions. I didn't want to interrupt the flow of conversation. So I did not. I did Sorry, not I forgot. Let, you. Me, hold on, let, me just, let, let me just see if there's anything really good that we missed. I mean, people talk about Cro-Mags. Everybody's happy. Uh, uh, asking about uh, Elvis track uh and surprises asking about um respect to steve yada 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 oh thank um, you um yeah no i think that's pretty much oh rocky is on fire i think rocky is who's rocky in, in the chromax is that the guitar player rocky is george he, yeah well rocky jo so okay so rocky george i used to see him with fishbone yeah of course and oh my title fuck dude he is some uh, I, I man he he was a secret weapon in Fishbone and just set the friggin' stage on fire. Phenomenal Rocky's guy. A phenomenal player. You know. I didn't know he was back in the band. That's awesome. Well, he's been, he's been in Chromax for quite a while now. Huh. Uh, past few years. Yeah. That would make sense because Fishbone, Fishbone like is basically the original lineup and Rocky George exited and they right. 
that makes sense yeah so. well steve this was a wonderful this is a wonderful wonderful all the way uh, from nashville tennessee all the way from nashville listen i'm gonna i'm gonna make one last statement yeah. i am hoping i'm hoping i don't know if this is gonna happen but i think it will if 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 i have a little gas in the tank what i'm hoping is i've been putting this out there for bands i've been trying to get bands i want them to cover sam Hain songs like earth ad songs or earth ad songs like sam Hain songs and if i can get that to happen you need to be the you need to listen to these songs and judge it and of like course. decide what fucking what's the shit if of i can course. put this contest together will you be the judge of the contest sure Fuck yeah steve listen have a safe trip call Say me hello to lana and, and give Otis a, a little a little pat on the head, and I will put you in. I, I'll we'll talk. I'll 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 text you. Okay. That's good, my friend. Hey, thank Take you for care, making guys. this phenomenal episode, dude. Woo. Take care. And there you have it, Steve. Motherfucking zing, salt of the earth. Truly one of the nicest guys I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. Um, casually knowing, uh, Steve is a great guy. Truly, truly a great guy. Really, really, really fucking awesome to all the fucking music fans out there. Um, and, you know, I mean, dude is fucking ginormous fucking, like, lover of the Misfits and, you know, all those bands himself, as he said, you know. Um, so this has been a great episode. I was not expecting that. That was what a great way to uh, finish out the episode. And uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see about a contest. Maybe we'll, 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 get, we'll try and get this cooking. Who knows? Uh, that would be a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, so freaking, yeah, I'll, as Alberto says, thank you so much. Thank you so much to Steve. Final thought, I think the Hate Breeders was the one song they played with Glenn. That's funny. Well, we're going to hear all about that story. Thanks to Pat Wolf for coming on. Thanks for Alberto and, and Pete and Greg, all you guys for coming on, making this a very special audience participation episode, you know? Um, definitely we'll try and do more of that stuff in the future. Okay. I am exhausted. Um, peace and hair grease.